from my room on the 12th floor of the Monomotapa Hotel, Harare, the Les Brown swimming pool looked irresistible. Every morning I looked down on school groups and swimming clubs plowing up and down its 850 meters lanes of pristine water. In a city where many could not afford to eat this display of routine in a magnificent municipal facility, one more Olympic-sized pool than London could boast at the time, was one among many anomalies. I was there, in November 2004, to cover a tour by the England cricket team that had more to do with politics than sport. A year earlier they had pulled out of a World Cup match in Harare amid death threats and calls for a boycott from politicians at home and in Zimbabwe, where President Mugabe's land reclamation program, assaults on white farmers and a crackdown on opposition were ongoing. Every other team scheduled to play in Harare did so. Two brave Zimbabwe players, Andy Flower and Henry Olunga, wore black armbands in protest at the death of democracy. They were dropped, and exiled. Image England's tour to the country was extremely controversial. England finally arrived 18 months later for a series whose only value was to the Mugabe regime, and English administrators keen to look their colleagues from cricket's small world in the eye. There was still opposition, but it was muted and cowed by the violence of an illegitimate regime. The players arrived to find England go home, shame on England scrawled on a wall near their hotel, the Rhodesian era landmark Meikles. On the streets the mood was indifferent. Then, as now, Zimbabweans had more to worry about than bat and ball. Those who knew the cricketers were there were welcoming, recognizing the value of a retinue of dollarich Hangerson, including journalists. Soaring inflation meant $1 bought Z $6,000 at the official rate. On the street you could get $8,500 and the dollar would be sold on for $10,000. We counted our cash rolls in millions. If the violence, oppression, hunger and fuel shortages that afflicted Mugabe's people there was very little sign, though a 15-minute drive in any direction would have revealed it. Image inflation in the country was soaring in 2004 you could find opulence too. We enjoyed a magnificent meal in restaurant concealed in a suburban garden. Surrounded by the political elite and cricket administrators, we ate steak and paid in dollars. The cricket, such as it was, took place under Mugabe's nose. The Harare Sports Club is a block from the presidential residence, State House. In 2004 the young SOLRS were there to keep us out, rather than him in. Mugabe did not come to the matches but in the bar the all-white members, ruddy-faced and khaki as if sent by central casting, were resigned to his rule. He was already 80 then. Framed on the wall was a check for £50, signed by Cecil Rhodes himself, that had paid for the club's foundation. At another colonial relic nearby, the Royal Harare Golf Club, the greens and fairways were still maintained while whole families lived under tarpaulins against the fence. Shamey, I played a round. He told me I had likely been followed to the pool, and was given cloak and dagger instructions on how we could meet Paul Kelso. My caddy wore an Australian cricket shirt and boots many sizes too large. The Australians, visitors earlier in the year, had donated their kit to the Cads. His was from towering fast bowler Jason Gillespie. There were no household names in the Zimbabwe team. The experienced white players had all been sacked in a dispute with the politically manipulated cricket board, leaving England to beat callow opponents. The young crowds, bust in we thought, seemed to enjoy the matches but the games were a charade, intended to project a sense of normality to the outside world in a country that was anything but. I discovered what counted for normal when I finally made it down to the Les Brown for his swim. As I dried offing the club swimmers I felt a presence behind me. Don't look round, said an English accent touched with Afrikaans that belonged to manning his daughter swim. Are you here for the cricket? Yes. Are you a journalist? Yes. Are you interested in torture image? Colorful crowds were bust in to project a sense of normality. He told me I had likely been followed to the pool, and was given cloak and dagger instructions on how we could meet later in the day. There was no doubt he was taking a risk approaching me. We finally met face-to-face -face in a shopping center car park, and I was driven to the suburban home of a brave committed MDC supporter, unwilling to accept what was happening to the country where he had raised his family. He showed me scores of photographs of the victims of Mugabe, opposition activists and their families who had been beaten and tortured for trying to contest elections. I took the images home and, at his request, handed them to Amnesty International. 
I wrote about it for The Guardian. It was the only useful thing I achieved in Zimbabwe. I looked and children are still using the less brown to learn to swim. They may be the first generation in almost 40 years that can hope to see change. Sky Views is a series of comment pieces by Sky News editors and correspondents, published every morning. Previously on Sky Views, Greg Milam Trump must deal with UAL misconduct claims.